Welcome back, my friends. Today I'm giving you a status update on the progress of my dream VR room. I'm considering the current status of uh, phase one. I finally have computers plugged in, both work computer and VR computer. So things are working and up and running, but there's still quite a few things left on the horizon to do. But at the same time, we've made a lot of progress and I wanna share you through what we have so far. I'm fully committing to the sit-down lifestyle in this room. You can see the work computer and the VR computer are both sitting on the floor because my number one goal in this whole setup is to maximize the most possible playroom for VR as much as I can while still having it functioning as an office. The biggest change, obviously, is the work computer. In the previous video, I showed you that my work desk was a stand-up desk that went up and down, and I really loved it, but it was also really massive, five feet by three feet. Originally, I was gonna try and put that on the floor to stay out of the way from VR playing, but thanks to all of your feedback, I decided to just get rid of it and start fresh. So the rising desk is now in my wife's sewing room. It's working out pretty well there and now I'm going with a split desk design. Okay, so this camera angle is a little weird. I found it really tricky to get a good spot because this is right against the corner of the room. Uh, I know my head is cut off, but whatever. So let me walk you through the work computer setup. This is an Ikea stepping stool, and I found this to be the perfect height for me. I find it to be a real challenge to be eye level with a computer. I think most computer stands and desks have you look down a little too far, at least for my comfort. I want to be totally eye level to keep my neck up, keep my head up. And so this IKEA stepping stool is perfect for the working computer. And this here is the movable part with the keyboard and tablet on it. The reason I have this set up like this, this very wide desk is because when it comes to my freelance animation work, I am very, very picky about the ergonomics of this setup because I'm doing this many hours a day. This had to be very wide to be over my legs because I want this at a very specific height. Now this little uh, shelf here, it's not going to win any awards by any stretch, but it's my first woodworking project and I'm pretty proud of it. It's just a laminate piece of wood on the top and four legs that are uh, sanded wood post. I went to Home Depot, got a wood post, they cut it into 10 and a quarter inch height. Brought that home, sanded it off, and then it's just really simple. Just drilled holes, put in screws, and voila. Perfect height for me, wide enough for my weird ergonomic setup, and also fully movable. So when I need to play VR, I can move this out of the way. And now that's all against the wall and out of the way for me to play. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention there's little uh, feet fuzzies on the bottom so it doesn't scratch the hardwood floor. I might evolve this in the future even more, maybe with like wheels or maybe a fold up situation, but so far I'm really, really pleased with how comfortable this is while working and how easy it is to just get it out of the way to play VR. So really, really happy with this so far. Okay, here we are for yet another awkward camera angle. <laughs> and so this is the VR PC. Ergonomics for this isn't nearly as important for me because I'm frankly not on the VR PC nearly as much as the work PC. I just got this really simple like dinner tray. I actually need to wrangle these cables a little better. It's a little weird, but uh, you get the idea. Then this gets put away for playing. And so this way, just like with the work PC, the play area is as maximized as I can imagine. And even though I'm sharing some products in this video, absolutely nothing in this video is sponsored. I'm just sharing with you all the stuff that I'm using. Also worth noting, ever since the first video, I now have a VR rug in this room. This is a simple IKEA rug, again, not sponsored. And for a while I had considered getting a smaller rug, that way the rug could be a cue that I'm approaching the edge of my play space in VR, which many of you recommended doing. But I opted to get a bigger rug because that way I knew while sitting on the floor and working, I would always be a little more comfortable on the rug whenever I'm sitting at these desks. 
Also while playing, I'm usually pretty good at noticing the chaperone bounds, so I personally don't really mind the chaperone bounds being my visual cue for the edge of the play space. All right, switching to phone recording now because I think it'll be easier to sort of be more mobile and give you an orbital view of the remaining stuff in the room. So let's switch this guy around. Now again, I'm calling this all phase one because it's function and not form right now. We have our staging area, which is meant for glasses and VR foam. Got my alcohol wipes there for cleaning these. Next to that, we have our charging station. This used to be on my desk under the computer, and now it's meant to be a designated area where I charge the controllers while not playing. Uh, I got a bunch of cables here. I'll get to this water glass in a minute. Uh, moving on beyond the computer desk, and we have uh, router, miscellaneous cables and crap. I really need to work on the cable management here. It could be a lot tidier. That's definitely gonna be the next steps, I think. Uh, VRPC, more cable management needed. Uh, got the fan for when I'm hot. Now let me bring up that water glass again. Yep, there it is, right there. <laughs> Uh, the reason I'm mentioning the water glass is because I'm still facing one furniture conundrum. I really like how everything is on the floor and out of the way, but I need something, at least one thing, regular table height, so I could more easily uh, drink water while playing. And I'm thinking what we're going to do is in the entryway, this is out of the play area zone. It's like this tiny hallway where the closet is. I think that could be a perfect spot. I don't know if it'll be a table or a shelf, but something very small to go there. Getting wired internet into my office was a real challenge. Wi-Fi does work in a pinch, but sometimes I have to upload really huge files and uh, Wi-Fi just is too slow, you know? And the challenge is because the internet comes in in this house in the laundry room basement, which is in the very farthest corner and getting an ethernet cable from there to here was virtually impossible without some kind of expensive uh, change or getting an expert or whatever. But a good friend of mine told me about power line adapters. I didn't know these existed. Apparently you plug in one of these into an outlet, put an ethernet cable in, put the second one in somewhere else in your house and pair them together and it sends the internet signal through the electrical sockets. I don't know how it works, it's black magic, but <laughs> I just know that it works well and it um, solved so many issues with this. It's such an elegant solution, I'm a huge fan, and it works uh, pretty well. So if you have trouble getting ethernet cables wired in your home, check out Powerline adapters, pretty slick. All right, let's talk lighthouses. Both in my room and my wife's sewing room, this is plaster and not drywall. Uh, this is my first experience with plaster, and so far I can tell you that I hate the stuff very, very much. The plaster is very crumbly, almost like sand. Uh, the previous owners, they had some nails in the walls here for some artwork they were hanging, and around the nails uh, was massive erosion just because you, you just touch the stuff and it just drips away like sand. It's very brittle and a pain to clean up, and Finding studs in plaster is much more difficult, at least for me, than drywall. The studs, they require special stud finders, but there's also a risk of drilling into a screw that holds the stud in place. It's just a huge nightmare that I did not want to deal with. But we are very, very fortunate that this place had picture rail. It allows you to hang artwork from a rail that looks like crown molding at the top of your room. Now, I haven't gotten to hanging artwork yet, but I wanted to try and utilize the picture rail to hang the lighthouses. I got some brass picture rail hooks so they were bendable. I put them side by side and then zip tied the lighthouse mounting to the back of them. And after cinching it nice and tight, it felt pretty sturdy. The bottom of the hooks, I also crimped those or uh, pinched them to sort of hug the bottom of the lighthouse mounting. Hooked it into the picture rail and it holds pretty steady. The one in that corner has been rock solid. The one in this corner 
made a bit of a rattling noise because when the lighthouse is spinning, I think there was just a little bit of like a gap or not quite flush against the wall. So I just put a little, uh, <laughs> put a little screw behind that picture rail and now the rattling has stopped. So having said all that, um, it plays perfectly. The tracking is rock solid and I haven't noticed any jitters or drops in tracking quality. In the first video, I also mentioned the conundrum I was facing about what to do with spiders and centipedes in this house. And I decided for now to just go thermonuclear and totally safe. I'm putting every headset inside an airtight bin along with some silica gel because it gets humid here. And I feel incredibly safe with the headsets in these bins. That's the solution for now. I might relax in the future, but that's what we're doing. Now, as far as future challenges in this room, first thing I think is to get some artwork in here. You can probably tell the room is still very echoey. Even though the rug kills a little bit of the echo, there's still a lot going on because the walls are totally bare. The artwork I think will also help with the tracking on the Reverb G2. When I've been playing on that in here, sometimes it has a difficult time tracking because these walls are so blank, there's very little for it to see and track on. All right, that's phase one of Dream VR Room Setup. I'm really pleased with the progress so far, and I'm also really thankful for all of your feedback and ideas. All of your comments, uh, both here on YouTube and in Discord, have been really enlightening and inspiring. It's thanks to your comments that I was inspired to try the split desk idea for the work computer, which I'm really loving. Um, yeah, keep the ideas coming. I love hearing it and it's incredibly inspiring. So I really appreciate it. I need to work on cable management that could look tidier. Need to work on uh, some kind of a out of the way table to hold uh, VR beverages. That's important to me. And I also need to organize the closets better. I don't think I showed the inside of the closets much because it's a hot mess in there. <laughs> Not worth showing. I need to really organize that as well. So definitely more on the docket. Thank you so much again for all your feedback and uh, we'll catch you soon. See ya, bye.